Hello and welcome to another episode of the Monday Book Club. Today we're looking at Geek Fantasy Adventure Ready Player One. Is it as good as people say? Let's take a look. I've heard a lot about this book over the last few years, mostly from retro gaming groups who have essentially fallen in love with it. Because of that, I picked up my copy with some trepidation. It couldn't possibly live up to all the hype, could it? Well, here's the thing. At the start, it really irked me. The book goes on at length about all computer games, but it does so in a way that doesn't feel like the author has actually played most of them. It feels an awful lot like the book is trying its best to find something anything that will fire the reader's nostalgia. So the first few chapters, the ones that aren't heavy on exposition about how the world for the novel is awful, reads mostly like a case of, hey, do you remember this? How about this? Do you remember this? Wasn't life good when we had this? Remember this? How about this? And so on and so forth. Then, around chapter 7, the book finally kicks into gear. The plot starts moving and, oh my goodness, it doesn't stop. I'm not kidding either. Suddenly, this book goes from trying to hand you your rose-tinted glasses to punching you in the face and shouting, Buckle up, sucker! It's time to shine! The Hunt for Halliday's Egg is a brilliant action-adventure that reminded me an awful lot of the way the recent Tintin film handled its plotline. With many action and adventure stories, there's always room for the plot to slow down so that the characters and the viewer can catch their breath and try to figure out what the next move will be. Not so with Tintin, it just kept leaping from one brilliant sequence to the next. Ready Player One fits the same mould. It grabs you by the throat and runs amok, leaping from one action sequence to the next with hardly any time to slow down. And then, when it does slow down, there's a damn good reason for it. And those sequences always further the plot as well. There's no fat to cut off from this book once the plotline gets going properly. It's an oddity. The slow start feels like the book was just trying to get the necessary plot backstory out of the way so it could run faster and more streamlined from there on in. That's not to say that it's all action and there's no development in the book. Both the characters and the world get fleshed out immensely, even the characters who are dead. Our protagonist, Parzival, moves from being a sad and lonely guy into an absolute badass with real motivations and you'll grow to really care about him and his world. Similarly, all his friends and the people he admires are all fleshed out wonderfully. Although if you've read Snow Crash, you'll know exactly where the plot twist with some of his friends are going and when they'll show up. The book is not without its flaws. The character twists are signposted a mile off and the main villain of the piece, Sorrento, gets next to no backstory or character development. He's just a generic evil guy. I've read online that there is backstory for him, but that it's not in the book. It should have been it would have made him a more compelling character than the standard action film villain that he's presented as. Although, having said that, perhaps adding that backstory in would have slowed the book down a little bit, but I'll let you make your mind up on that one. I mentioned the dead characters earlier, and that's something I want to come back to. Halliday is a central character in this story, even though he's hardly in the story at all. He's there for the video introducing the egg hunt, but after that, it's all about the legacy he's left behind. In many ways, the book is a love story, it's obvious that the main characters adore Halliday and the world he's created, just as much as they love the 1980s and the pop culture that it brought us. The book spends a lot of time not just telling us why these characters love these things as they do, but also showing us that love, and showing us how Halliday and the 80s legacy has moulded them as people. I'm often asked by people why I love gaming so much, and it's hard to answer that question, because it's something that you feel more than something you explain. This book manages to explain why people love games, why people love films, and more, and it does it by showing us the love, as well as showing us the friendships and the camaraderie that come from that love. But the most important thing about Ready Player One, in my view, is that you don't have to be a gamer to enjoy it. Yes, it's steeped in gaming lore, and the entire setting is a love letter to old games, but at no point did I have to step away and look up anything that was being discussed. I'm a child of the 80s. My formative years were spent gaming on my Amstrad CPC, and as a result, most of these Atari, Intellivision and arcade games that the book is talking about weren't part of my heritage. I hadn't played most of the games the book talks about while I was growing up. I still haven't. It didn't matter. 
The vivid descriptions and references that the book used were all explained so well that I could instantly picture what was going on, blocky graphics and chirpy sound effects included. So if you're worried that you won't have the gaming knowledge required to enjoy this book, don't fret. I didn't think I would enjoy the book all that much when I started reading it, but I was honestly blown away by how well it's written. It's one of the best post-cyberpunk novels that I've ever read, and every twist and turn of the plot, character twist accepted, was an absolute delight. I loved the feeling when I was actually trying to anticipate which direction the story would go in next, and although I never actually managed to correctly predict each of the twists, I still adored the story anyway. Will I recommend this one? Definitely. Seek it out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. And there you are. I really enjoyed this one. It's a good, fun book. I couldn't put it down once I got into it, so I think if you give it a try, you'll enjoy it too. Anyway, that's all we've got time for this week, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked this, and if you did, remember to click that like button, share it with your friends, so they'll know a good book when they see it, and do subscribe for future videos, because there will be more in the future. But until next time, I've been Zoe Kirk Robinson, you've been watching the Monday Book Club on ZJKR, and I'll see you later. Today's video is brought to you by my graphic novels, The Collected Life of Naughty Mouse, Volume 1, All Over the House, Volume 1, and All Over the House, Volume 2. Thank you.